This show is brought to you by the This Old Nerd Store, powered by Amazon.com. Buy from the This Old Nerd Store, you get tech, we get a commission. It's win-win. Welcome back to This Old Nerd. I'm Aya Zaktar. I am your host of this show, This Old Nerd. Let me tell you something about this program if you're brand new. Maybe you've never seen this show before. You have no idea what this is. This show shows you how to have the most tech-forward life and home possible. Today's episode, we're talking about front ends for a home media server. Way back in episode two, if you go to thisoldnerd.com, you can see this. We built a home media server that had all our DVDs, our pictures, our video files, all that stuff all in one box. Now we needed a way to access all that stuff. We've shown you how to do that with a Windows solution. We've shown you how to do it with a Mac solution. We've shown you set-top boxes that can take care of that as well. But today, we're gonna use our video game systems to access our home media server. Now a quick note, we're not gonna be talking about online streaming content in this episode. We're going to focus on accessing all the stuff that we have on our centralized server. Let's cover the Nintendo Wii. See this little funhouse thing? That's what it's for, okay? It's a little fun game and everything, but it is not very good at accessing your media server. You can do it via some kind of internet browser hack. I think it's really lame because the video quality is really low. Don't forget the Nintendo Wii maxes out at 480p. This show is available in 720p, so you couldn't even see the full resolution of this we're gonna be talking about the big boys, the 360 and the PS3. A quick note about the way this episode is structured. First, we're gonna look at if our server is based on Windows, and then we're gonna look if our server is based on Mac. Now, our solutions might be cross-platform, some of them run on Linux even, so watch the whole episode. Now, we're at our Windows machine, and if our server's running on Windows, here's what you need to do. First, you need to define what libraries will be shared. You can do that in Media Center. We're gonna hit Settings in Media Center, we're gonna to go to Media Libraries. We're gonna set up our Video Media Library. We're gonna add a folder to this. Now it could be on this computer, another computer, or just a shared folder. Just, just depends on how you've set up your network. And in our case, all our videos on Drobo, which we've mapped to the X drive. Now Windows 7 actually has built into it something that allows you to share all your media libraries really easily to things that have DLNA. Now DLNA is some standard out there that makes it easy for computers and, and phones and cameras all to share content without needing to do any weird protocol stuff. So what we're gonna do is go into our control panel. Okay, we're in our control panel and we're gonna click Network and Sharing Center. Then we're gonna to go to Choose Home Group and Sharing Options. Share media with devices. Stream my pictures, music, and videos to all devices on my network. So you click that yes. And then you can check this out. Choose media streaming options if you want. So you can see it actually, it already sees our 360. It's actually seen other devices in the past. You can actually tell it, no, the 360 can't look at this. But since we want our 360 to see this, we can do that. We're gonna hit allowed and that's working great. We're gonna hit okay. And now our content is gonna be shared to anything on our home network that can access this. And surprisingly, the PS3 and the 360 can access this out of the box. Now you can share your libraries also through Windows Media Player if you want to. We were showing you Media Center because that's what we use a lot. We've set up our Windows machine to share. We're at our Xbox to show you this. You can go into your video library. There's two ways to get this. Now you can see we actually have a whole bunch of servers. Come on in tight, I'll show you this. You can see that 360 actually is seeing a bunch of servers. We have our PS3 media server, Unicron, which is another machine, Play on Vostro, and Vostro Merlin. Now Vostro is the name of our Windows 7 machine, so we're gonna click that. And now you can see it's actually organized already based on the structure we have on our media center. So there's, you've seen this before, 10 things I hate about you, 28 days later, all this fun stuff. Let's go watch American Psycho. The thing about the 360 is it actually has two different ways to access your media. There's that video library section that I showed you there, and then there's Windows Media Center Extender, which is also available there. But if you don't have a media center, it doesn't work that way. So let me tell you what files the 360 can play with its video library. 360 can handle an MP4, M4V, DivX does not work out of the box, XVID did work. Now oddly, the Windows Media Center Extender in Xbox 360 will play DivX. Why, I have no idea. But it will not play DivX in the video library. But you saw how easy it was to access your files. And again, if you want that really consistent experience, this is exactly the same as we have on our Media Center PC. So this makes it very, very friendly for your partner because if they've never seen, well, if they've only seen Windows Media Center, they'll know how this works. We fired up our PS3 to access our Windows-based home server. Now we're gonna go into video and you're gonna see there it is, Vostro Merlin. Merlin happens to be my wife's name. This could say, Merlin, click here to play video if I wanted to because that's one of the settings you can actually do. Let's go into this. You're gonna see something pretty familiar. 
There's music, videos, pictures, playlists. Let's look at videos because that's what we really want to see. Now you can go into all videos and you're going to get one supremely long list if you have a media server like we do because we have thousands of files. Let's talk about the file format the PS3 supports out of the box. It handles MP4s, M4Vs, DivX playback with nothing necessary, XVID playback all on the PS3 by using a Windows based server. This actually works really well and there's no double interface. Now then again, if your partner only knows Media Center, they might be like, what is this? Why does it look all funky? What, what is this cross beam thing and like, what's going on? Now we tested this out with an actual partner. We asked my wife, and you know her name is Merlin, we told her, hey, can you go find Iron Man? And she could. Then again, your partner may vary. My partner is really into tech. She's installed CD-ROMs in actual desktops in the old days and has set up uh, home networks in her own parents' house. So she's wacky. But then again, this is not difficult. Let's be serious. This is the PlayStation interface. It's pretty basic and laid out. And if you make shortcuts and things via folders, you'll be able to find everything. Now we contacted our friends at Drobo and guess what? They are hooking us up. We're gonna have a deal for you. Here are the details. If you go to drobostore.com and use the code thisoldnerd, all caps, no spaces, you can save $50 off of a Drobo. If you buy a Drobo FS or a Drobo S, you'll save $100. If you buy the Drobo Pro, you'll save $150. Once again, the code is this old nerd. These codes only work in the US. EU codes are coming soon. Now neither the 360 nor the PS3 could play MKVs or DVDs without needing a software layer to take care of that. We're gonna use Tversity and that'll take care of MKVs and certain other video files like DivX that didn't work on the 360, but it still doesn't give you DVD support. This is Tversity, it's a free piece of software. Let's take a look at it real fast. So what you do is, you have your sources, we have our file system. We're gonna hit plus. We're gonna pick our folder. You're gonna to browse to your network and our thing happens to be on our X drive. We hit X, we hit okay. And then you hit submit and you're all set. Here's our path and now Tversity is gonna be able to take whatever file is in this path and it's going to transcode it live as it's going to our PS3 or 360 and then it'll play on those things. If you're using something to transcode on the fly, your server better be pretty beefy. It's better have some serious processing power because most file servers, like I, we have a Mac mini over there, not exactly the cutting edge of technology. It just has to serve up files. But if you're talking about transcoding like Tversity or something, you need a beefy processor or graphics card. If you're wondering how Tversity is gonna show up on your PS3 or Xbox 360, just go into your video library on the PS3, you'll see this here. You'll see Vostro Tversity Media Server right there. You'll pick it and you'll see where our videos are. You're gonna notice something odd about this videos folder. You're gonna see only three options here. The weird thing is that Tversity is seeming to have some kind of issue with our 3.5 terabyte media server library, but we did a bunch of tests right here. Here's our video test world. We checked out DivX files and video TS. There's DivX, there's MP4, M4V. Everything played well except for this video TS. When we use Tversity, we can run things like MKVs, no problem. Now, back on the 360 side, it gives it DivX support that you normally wouldn't get. Now, if you have a Mac and that's what you use as your media server, well, you don't have the same kind of thing that you have in Windows 7. Microsoft went ahead and put in those awesome sharing options, but Apple didn't. So now you have to find a way to make your Mac a DLNA server. Now, there are a lot of pay options. There's playback, it costs $15. It worked pretty well in our tests. There's Null River. They have two different pieces of software. They have Media Link for PS3 or Connect 360 for 360. So you have to pick which one you have. If you have both systems, you have to buy two pieces of software. I don't really care for that. There's also Orb, but that's free. We had some playback issues. We lost all media controls. We couldn't hit play, pause, scan. Either you hit play and you had to watch the video. And when you wanted to stop, that was it. What we're gonna focus on is the PS3 media server. This is a free cross-platform piece of software. It's written in Java, which means it runs on Linux, Windows, and Mac, and it's totally free. Let's talk about it right now. Here we have the PS3 Media Server V1.10.5 running on an old Mac Mini. So here's what we're doing here. You can see that we have a status that PS3 has been found. Traces, this is a lot of information. Never show your partner this. You don't want them to be scared. General config, I suggest starting minimize. That's really easy. Here's something we had to change to make sure this worked. Can we see this here? It says force networking on interface. Yes. Okay, now you're going to select. Now normally nothing is selected. Choose something. I use EN0 because that's our port for our Ethernet jack and we're 
using a hardwired home network. Let's see, so navigation share settings. Here's where you set your shared folders. You just hit plus. Here's where we get something interesting. We got transcoding settings. PS3 media server, for some reason, will show you subtitles. If you come all the way down here under miscellaneous options, see this? Definitely disable subtitles. If you don't want to watch DVDs with subtitles, uh, turn this feature on. You just click it on. Normally, it's not checked by default. I suggest checking it because once you actually run a DVD using the PS3 media server, you're not going to be able to take off the subtitles using the PS3 controller. You have to do this via the media server. So let's go and see it actually working. So if we're running the PS3 media server on our Linux box or Mac or our Windows machine, again, we're doing on the Mac here, you'll go into video and look, surprise, surprise, PS3 media server, and then it shows the information, Bender Home, that's our actual media server. So we're gonna hit OK. We put a couple of shortcuts. There's video test world. Here's where we have all our test files again. And we'll show you something here. You can hide this transcode thing. It's actually in the settings. It probably makes it a little bit more friendly if that's not there. You can see the other files are there. Here's our DivX file. Here's our MP4, MK, M4V, MKV, MP4, and XVID. We have two MP4s because we want to make sure it works. But it also handles DVDs. Now this is not exactly partner friendly when you go into this DVD. You'll see here it says Title One M Encoder, not super friendly, but if you explain nicely that if you go to DVD, Video TS, and you click Title One, well, you'll get a DVD playback. And there we go, we got the Dark Knight running. Now, the PS3 media server also has transcoding abilities. It's transcoding this DVD. It transcodes MKVs. So if you have a giant 25 gigabyte Iron Man file like we have, well, you better have, again, a really powerful server. That Mac Mini over there pretty much choked under the pressure of Iron Man. When we ran the server on our giant 8-core Mac Pro, well, guess what? It ran fine. By the way, when you're transcoding video, be aware that you might not have the same kind of control. You'll be able to play and pause, but you might not be able to rewind and fast forward very well because, it, don't forget, it's transcoding and sending that transcoded file over to the PS3 or Xbox 360. Let's take a look at the 360 and how it handles the PS3 media server. Because guess what? The 360 can see the PS3 media server. I know that sounds strange, but it's gonna work. Check this out. Now we didn't show you before, but Tversity obviously on the Vostro showing up there. You can access files that way. And here it is, PS3 media server. We actually have it running on two different machines because we wanted to make sure it worked. And look, there's Iron Man. Now this is the giant Iron Man MKV. Okay, we're talking 25 gigabytes. Let's see how the 360 handles receiving a giant transcoded file right now. You can see that the video is really, really stuttering. It's not moving very fast. I think we're getting all the frames, but we're getting them maybe at half speed. So your solution is gonna vary. If you've got a Windows box like this, you can use Windows inbuilt stuff. If you have a lot of files that are like DivX files and you have a 360, you wanna use something like Tversity because that'll take care of the transcoding. If you have a Mac, you're going to use something like the PS3 media server so you can access that on your 360 or on your PS3. Have you actually built your media server yet? Okay, now in my case, we built our media server a really long time ago. All our files were made. We had so many different things. We have DivX, XVID. We have different styles of MP4s, different codecs and all that other stuff. So we need a very robust option if we're going to use anything. If you haven't set it up yet, well, decide which one you like. Well, I suggest making everything maybe MP4s. That way, the Xbox 360 can read them natively, so you get full control. The PS3 can do the same, and so can Media Center, and a ton of set-top boxes. And a lot of portable devices can support MP4s out of the gate. That wraps up our series on front-end software, and set-top boxes, and hardware, and anything else. Why did we do this? Because you guys asked. You guys had a lot of comments, and I love it when you guys give us feedback. That way, we get good show ideas, and you know, I'm learning some stuff. Next week, we're not doing front ends. Next week, we're doing something completely new. I have no idea what it is just yet because I'm pretty much uh, punch drunk on front ends. By the way, if you guys are wondering, well, what do you use at home? What exactly is your setup? We're gonna have an online exclusive video. You can go to thisolnerd.com. It'll be available in a couple of days. And I think that pretty much wraps up this episode. I'm Aya Zaktar for This Old Nerd. This is this guy for This Old Nerd and Son. And we need you to ask yourself the question, how's your tech life? Because it could be better.
Wow, this is so much easier. You're a genius.